What's up everybody, Greg here with Lens Sport to Go and Lens Rentals, and in today's video, we're gonna be checking out a super funky lens, the Laowa 24 millimeter macro probe lens. Now, as you can tell, this is not just any normal lens, and there's a lot of funky things about it and some really unique things you can do with it. So before we get into talking about the lens, I wanna show you some of the footage and what you can expect and some of the unique things you can do with a lens like this. So let's roll that footage. Super cool, right? This lens has been getting a lot of popularity lately and a lot of attention in the media, specifically from one video called Shooting Macro from Macro Room. Now this video came out about seven months ago, so towards the end of 2018, and it really showed off some of the unique things that you can do with a probe lens like this, as you also probably saw in some of my footage. If you wanna check out that video and some of the other things you can do with it, check out the link in the description below. What we're gonna cover in this video is going over all the specs and sort of build of the lens. We're gonna look at some of the features that this lens has, as well as some of the things that you should know going into using this and some of the quirks and problems you'll have while trying to shoot with it. So starting off with the build, it has a full metal housing, which is super solid. It really feels really well made. You have a smooth aperture ring as well as a focus ring. The weight of the lens itself is just under a pound, so as big and sort of as solid as it is, it isn't really that heavy, which makes it pretty easy to carry around. I have it in E-mount right now, so Sony E-mount, but it also comes in Canon EF mount, Nikon F mount, and PL mount. So depending on what sort of situation you're using, you can use different mounts on it. They aren't swappable, so you do need to get the lens that is for the specific camera or mount that you're using. Going to the opposite side from the mount on the front of the lens, you see a few LED lights in there. You get like a nice little LED ring light that's powered by this USB port right on the back and that gets you a ton of extra power. The widest this lens can get is f14, so it's a pretty tight aperture, and then you can close down all the way to f40. Now, this isn't a huge deal when you're shooting macro like this because you're gonna wanna have more depth of field anyway. If you were able to open up to say a f4 or an f2.8, you're gonna have such a shallow depth of field that you're not gonna see anything anyway. It's gonna be so blurred out in both directions from your focus plane. So being stopped down to an f4 and being limited with that, kind of works out in your advantage. You just need to remember that you need to have a lot of light, which is what's helped by the LEDs in the front of the lens. Looking inside the lens at the aperture, there are seven different aperture blades, so you don't get super circular bokeh. It's kind of a little bit harsh in the background, and you do see some edges. But you are stopped down so much that you're not gonna have that kind of crazy bokeh that you could normally see if you could open up wider. Jumping into some of the features, on the front of the lens all the way up to this USB port, so this first probably eight inches is actually completely submergible. So you could dunk this right underwater as long as you don't get anything in the USB port, which again is used to power your LED lights. And I'll talk a little bit about that later on. The other thing is that you can get a close focus of one foot six inches. Now that's one foot six inches from the sensor plane, which is gonna be right behind the lens. So basically you can have something directly in front of this lens and still have it in focus, which is incredibly impressive. And you can get really, really close to it, especially having the wide field of view of 24 millimeters. It gives a really unique look. The focus can go from a two to one reproduction ratio, and then you can focus all the way to infinity. So you could use this as a normal lens, as well as getting those super close up macro shots. So you're not just limited to shooting things that are right in front of the lens. You can shoot stuff at 10 feet, at four feet, wherever you want up to infinity. And this lens is completely manual, so there's no automatic features with it. You're gonna have to do all of your focusing and your aperture adjustments on the lens itself. One of the kind of weird things about this lens is that because the front element is so far away from the sensor plane, when you start to pan back and forth or you tilt up and down, you actually get a little bit of a parallax effect on your subject. So if your subject's standing in front of something and you pan to the right or pan to the left, you're gonna start to see behind your subject which is really cool and it actually gives it the look of having like a slide or a jib or boom up and down instead of just a tilt or pan. 
Now, before I get into talking about some of the tricky things about working with this lens, I wanna talk about one accessory that you should definitely pick up, and this is a dimmer switch for the light. Now, this plugs in USB right into the lens, and then this goes USB into some other sort of power source. I currently just have the Dionic 90 gold mount battery, so I'm gonna get a ton of runtime on it, and that just slaps into the USB port, and then this goes into the lens, and I can control the dimming and on and off power with this unit. You can also get smaller just power bricks, USB power bricks, but they do run out pretty quick with this light on full power. It does have quite a bit of output and draw from those kind of batteries. So I would definitely recommend getting something bigger if you're gonna be shooting a lot with it or just having some sort of wall adapter that you can plug into the wall to have full power if you're shooting in like a studio environment. So getting onto some of the other things about this lens and what you should really expect when you start to shoot with it. For one is that it is only an f14 so you need a lot of light to use this lens and being an f14 to an f40 you're also having a really deep depth of field so just like with a normal lens if you stop down that much you're going to start to see a lot of the dirt specks on either your sensor or the front of the lens so you really need to make sure that you keep this clean as well as your sensor because you're not going to be able to kind of hide any of that by just blurring out the image Another thing is when you're really up close doing a macro on something, depending on the direction of your light, if you're not using the LEDs that are built in, you're actually gonna get a shadow from the lens because you're so close to it. So that's just something to pay attention to in the direction that you're shooting and if you end up using these lights or not. If you do use these lights, make sure you're paying attention to the reflections because you're gonna see sort of this hexagon light pattern if you have something reflective that you're shooting, like say the back of a bug that has a little bit shiny shell, you're gonna see the LEDs in that reflection. You also don't have any place to mount a battery like this if this is what you're gonna go with. So you're gonna have to figure out an option to mount this to either the tripod or put it in your pocket or something like that if you're gonna be powering the light off of this. Now the last thing about this lens is that because it is so long and the mounting point usually for where you're gonna be putting on a tripod is on the bottom of your camera, you do get a little bit of unwanted shake from the back of it. So you just really wanna have an extra support and if you can, put it on some rails and throw a lens support underneath it to really just lock it down and have it as solid as possible. So you sort of minimize as much of that shake and introduction of vibrations as you can. Also having a camera that has in-body image stabilization will help a ton as well. Now for the cost of this lens. It runs in at $1,500 or $1,499 for the standard version. You can get the cine modded version, which has geared rings on the end. So if you're gonna do a wireless follow focus, you wanna control it remotely, you can do that with this lens. But that is gonna be a little bit more, I believe it's extra $200 for the cine mod. Now that's gonna wrap it up for this video. If you guys have any questions about this lens or any unique ways you think you could use it, let me know in the comments below. If you wanna try it out for yourself, there's gonna be links in the description, so definitely go and check those out. And if you like this video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for new videos every single week, and I'll see you in the next one.